Hi guys, welcome to Bucking Jack. I'm Adrian, and today we're back off to another Red Bar event. I don't know exactly what this one's about. Some sort of auction, some sort of ridiculous watches, but let's go check it out. Right now, I'm wearing, I'll just show you. This is f***ing gorgeous. This is as incredible as you think it would be. This is, of course, the Rolex Daytona Paul Newman. This is the reference 6241, and it is from 1964. The owner who's bought it in for auction bought it in 1971, and the rumor is that when he bought it in 1971, he took it to his bank and just left it in a safe deposit box and pretty much forgot about it. The bank shut down, and they called him and said, can you come pick up your stuff? He actually forgot about it and he went to pick it up and he apparently bought it to auction and was hoping to get around eight grand for it. This is estimated to go for 80 to 100,000 pounds. It is in fantastic condition. It's got a box and papers, it's got the whole set, everything is original. This thing is absolutely beautiful. It's, it's bizarre because it's got so much more character and so much more style to it than any of the Rolexes that are around today. The, uh, the typography of the numerals, use of red, not only on the Daytona, but the use of red around the indices. Everything's just brilliant. The pan of dial, the loom, although the loom's heavily patinaed now, and also the, the white dial is now a nice cream. This is powered by a manual wind Valju 72 movement. It's quite dainty, it's 37 millimeters wide, and the bracelet is incredibly light and feels really quite fragile. It feels like it's made out of a tin can or something, but uh, it was incredible to be able to experience something like this. And it's, uh, I know I sound like an absolute fanboy and a, a complete wet flannel, but uh, it was, it felt like a special moment. It'd be really interesting to see what this actually goes for at auction. So this is a Submariner, the Submariner. This is from 1954. This is a reference 6204, and this is quite a dainty little thing. It's as small as the um, as the Daytona, with it, with it being 37 millimeters wide. But the fact it doesn't have those extra pushes make it feel really small. And it might also be kind of an, an illusion or something, an, an expectation that we have to see those crown guards. Uh, within this Submariner design and they're just not there therefore it makes it feel a lot more dainty than what it actually is. Uh, I kind of feel sorry for that crown that's sitting all on its own over there. But I like the look of it without the crown guard. It, it, it feels very clean it, it, but I, I can't help but feel it and think it feels dainty. This thing has seen some real history going on and look at the loom, look at the hand, the, the patina this thing has got is absolutely sensational. It's so smooth, it's so buttery. The uh, the bezel's obviously really nicely aged. The the bracelet is shocking, <laughs> it's so rattly and, and lightweight. It's, it's hard to think that this is a tall watch because it felt so incredibly delicate. As an overall uh, kind of watch, it doesn't shine to me anywhere near as much as the Daytona. But for me, the thing that I feel a, a, a more stronger connection rather than aesthetically is to do with the history of this piece. One, what this has gone through, and two, the fact that this is the start of the whole Submariner journey. And uh, it's, it's kind of grown to be the most iconic watch in the world, which is quite an amazing journey. This is estimated to go for 46 to 58,000 pounds. So this one really surprised me. I've, I've always been a fan of Audemars Piguet and, and especially the Royal Oak. The, the, there's something so 
so satisfying about the design of the Royal Oak and so satisfying about the engineering of their bracelets. I, I enjoyed this a lot more than what I thought of. I, I knew I would enjoy it, but I, I really enjoyed this thing. This thing is just pure beauty. It's so comfortable to wear. It looks so good to wear. The weight is really satisfying. The bracelet just hugs your wrist. The clasp is horrendously annoying, <laughs> both to shut and to open. But once it's closed, then it's it's all hidden within the links. This this thing is absolutely fantastic. There's there's nothing rare about this thing. There's there's nothing uh, fancy about this. It, it has a massive weight list, which is why I took the opportunity to try it on. This one's 39 millimeters wide, so I think that's probably why it sat so well with me. Is because it wasn't oversized. It's not big. It, that's actually quite small for obviously today's standards. And this is only from 2010. Uh, this is powered by the caliber 3120, and it's the reference 15300 ST. I, I really like this thing. I, I think I'm going to have to make it a life goal to get me one of these. I love it. This, this one is <laughs> it's the odd one out of this group here. I couldn't not try this thing on. It's, it absolutely screamed to the, 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 my want of the glitz and glamour of the Wolf of Wall Street or to, to, to be a dirty banker who's walking around with a solid gold Rolex. It's, it just makes me, it screams Vegas, it screams old, I don't know, like a Ferrari Testarossa or a Ferrari F40 driving down some highway in Miami. It, it, it just screams that typical rich boy lifestyle. And perhaps there's, there's something deep in me that, that, that wants that, I don't know, but I, I had to try this thing on. I, I absolutely love old gold, but this isn't old at all. This isn't rare, this isn't anything, this is just, me being a kid in the toy shop and just wanting to play. This one's actually from 1995 and it's a reference 16618. And it's powered by the typical Submariner Cusk certified uh, movement, the 3135. There's nothing special about this, nothing anything about this. It was just me being a kid wanting to play and I played. <laughs> So this piece was really interesting to get a hold of. It's, this really sung to me. The Paul Newman was a piece of art. This is, for me, a piece of machinery, but there's such a beautifully designed machine. It's kind of the, the epitome of everything that we want, or, or sorry, I'm talking about myself, everything that I want in a watch. It's got the maxi markers, it's got the decent bezel, it's got the hefty case, it doesn't have a cyclops, and it also has red text, and not one line, it has two lines of red text. This is the double red Sea Dweller, the reference 1665. And it's powered by the caliber 1570. This thing is an absolute beauty. It's 40 millimeters wide and it is from 1977. For the guys who go to these sorts of auctions when, where there's watches selling for a hundred thousand pounds, this one is a mere 23,000 pounds. The, the Paul Newman I was in complete awe of because it's, it's an absolute beauty, but there was something about this which just said, I am the ultimate. I really love this thing. So guys, that is my video on this amazing collection of watches. It'll be interesting to see what they actually go for at auction, because I find auction houses often put the estimates quite low, um, especially something like a Paul Newman that's probably going to smash its, its estimate. But we'll, we'll just have to see what actually happens. Uh, overall, it was amazing to get to play with my kind of grail selection of watches. Uh, it, was, it was it was really quite cool. Drop me a comment down below and let me know which one is your favourite out of these guys. Or, or, or maybe this kind of stuff just doesn't appetise you. It's, it's, it's not part of your thing. But uh, for me, it was, it was really cool to get involved with these guys. Um, don't forget, I'm doing a watch giveaway when we hit 10,000 subscribers. You only have to do two things to get involved with that. One is subscribe. 
And the second is hit the little bell icon down there. And that gives you notifications whenever I drop a new video. And I think that's it. Oh, check me out on Instagram at Bark and Jack. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.